Luxor Governorate. This comes as part of choosing Luxor Governorate to be named at the capital of the international tourism for 2016 by the United Nations World Tourism Organization last May when Egypt was chairing the 103rd session held in Malaga, Spain and under the title Tourism and Security Towards a Framework for a Safe, Secure and Seamless Travel. دي فرصة عظيمة إن إحنا نوري العالم كله إزاي this is a very good chance to show the whole world that Luxor is safe and Egypt is safe. People walk around in the streets with complete freedom and enjoy its night. As you can see, the participation is over any description. Thanks God that we have hosted this conference and we have regained people's confidence to come back. And soon I believe that we will regain the numbers of people that Egypt used to host one more time. The Luxor Govern Rate has also hosted the fifth global summit on city tourism under the title Cities and Local Culture for Global Travelers after the United Nations World Tourism Organization has chosen Luxor to be named at the capital and to host this event. The fifth UNWTO Global Summit has discussed the tourism trend in the city including sustainable development and innovation in the field of city tourism and cross-culture behavior and gathering will also discuss how the public and the private sector has contributed to the tourism development, cultural exchange between the nation's identity and cultural heritage, preservation of the countries. At the end of my presentation, uh, I launched for the first time in Luxor, the Luxor Pass. Uh, it's one ticket that the tourists can buy for once, for $100 and $50 for students and it allows him to get, uh, to get a free entrance for all museums and uh, archaeological for during five days. And uh, we are opening also for the first time uh, Nefertari and the City First Tombs uh, with individual tickets which cost 1,000 Egyptian pounds for each. There was no really a preparation because we were all ready. Luxor is a brand name, Luxor is one of the historical cities. Uh, we are developing the infrastructure from uh, two years ago, uh, we have a plan. Uh, to put uh, Luxor in its what is deserved as an international uh, tourism and heritage uh, city. Uh, this two conference we hosted here and we have also another conference and uh, uh, a very full agenda for the next months and we hope to complete it like this and we gain our numbers again. Attending the session were a big number of representatives from over 40 countries, including ministers and representatives of tourism ministry from all over the world. And of course, heading the session were Secretary General of the UNWTO, Dr. Talib al Rafai, Minister of Tourism, Yahya Rashid, where they have discussed the opportunities and the challenges facing the tourism sector. From the Luxor Temple, the fifth global summit on city tourism has ended today with an amazing performance that amazed everybody here, sending the whole world a message of peace and telling everyone that Egypt is safe, secure and stable. Dina Hoidak, Nile TV International. Welcome back. And uh, one of the most important events took place uh, last week in Egypt was the inauguration of the 38th uh, Cairo International uh, Film uh, Festival. This important event was attended by uh, many superstars in Egypt and, of course, uh, foreign uh, stars from uh, abroad. Many have uh, participated with uh, their uh, movies. And um, this year, uh, this year's inauguration was different than the years uh, before. So. To shed more light on this important uh, event, we are joined by our guest today, uh, Mr. Uh, Mahmoud Al Mahdi, film uh, critic, and the Spanish actor, uh, Juan uh, Charles. Hello and welcome to Nacruz. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you for having us. Thank, Thank you for joining us. And um, to start with, uh, Mahmoud, um, uh, it has been a turbulent, uh, you know, period yes. uh, for Egypt and specifically this industry. So, do you see some signs or marks of recovery in this edition, uh, the 38th edition? Yes, of the uh, 
a lot of them actually. To, to tell you the truth, I'm not normally a very enthusiastic person about the Cairo Film Festival. I rarely ever went there to see screenings, yeah, that, but I own. That's good. We're starting the interview with lots of openness. See, yeah. So, yeah. No, because he's a critic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you have to say yeah. that. I've promised a great deal of honesty in this <laughs> yeah. interview. So, uh, going there, I didn't really know what to expect. I was there to watch the movies, to meet uh, the stars and the directors and the filmmakers of the films that I was supposed to be discussing and interviewing. And I was surprised because the overall there was, was very exciting. Uh, you have a lot of young filmmakers, you have a lot of critics, you have uh, a lot of stars, as you just mentioned. And it's a great deal of uh, enlightenment, really, to be there uh, among all those people watching those screenings. I met film critics there who were running from one screening to the other, summing up a total of six or seven movies every day, and they are not even tired of it. Wow. So that was very uh, refreshing, to say the least. And the overall atmosphere and the attendance there would give total proofs what you just mentioned. It, it is a very uh, exciting time and a great deal of recovery was expressed in this event. But you usually don't, um, you didn't attend the previous versions? Uh, like 15 or 20 years ago I went to one or two screenings okay. perhaps oh. and for uh, reasons that I don't really want to mention so yeah. Yes. <laughs> but that's very good. What you see, you like what you see. I liked what I saw and yeah. uh, it gave me a little bit of regret really that I've been missing on all these uh, experiences mm -hmm. and a lot of the fun really because uh, this, see this is part of the reputation that festivals or film festivals in particular take that they're very sophisticated events attended by very sophisticated people speaking a language that you don't really have to uh, relate to in terms of fun and entertainment but that was not true there's Mr. a great Mahmoud, deal of I'll, entertainment I'll be fun back to movies. you to know the the things that you don't want to say but right. I want to take it out from you, but I'll, I'll start with Joanne. Hello. Um, hello, Joanne, and welcome of to Egypt. Thank you. Uh, tell us more about your, your movie and the role you're playing in, and of course your experience in Egypt. Uh, my experience here in Cairo has, has been amazing. I'm so happy to be here, and you all are treating me so well, so I, I, I have not any, any complaints about that. And my film is a Spanish film from Spain called The, the Exile. El Destierro in Spanish, and it's about three people who has to be in a spot of vigilance in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the mountains in Spain, back in the Civil War, Spanish Civil War. And there they have to like, try to survive to many things that happen to them. Okay. Yeah. So, so you were one of those three? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm one of the main characters, we are like yes. three main characters and I'm one of them. Um, my, my colleagues Monica and Kike back in Spain, they couldn't yes. make it and I came by myself to... Yes. Interesting, to tell us a, a little bit about this, the experience itself, uh, because you probably shot in the, in the mountains. Yeah, we shot in the mountains during the winter, it's quite cold in Spain, <laughs> otherwise yeah. people think that it's, it's, it's hot but it's not in Spain. Uh, the winter is so so aggressive sometimes, yeah. and we shoot in this place called Avila next to Madrid, and it was and it was so 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 cold. So it was a nice but a really hard experience Tough to shoot, experience. shoot there okay. with all the uh, with all the snow and everything. It was hard because of that, and because we shoot in four parts the movie, because we needed the same the same the same place. With snow, then without snow, and then and then with um, so the, the the shooting was was divided in four parts, and it was high, hard as well as well uh, because of that. Mr. Mahmoud, um, of course, as a film critic and as a critic in general, um, the Cairo International Film Festival used to have a glamour before. Yep. Most of the superstars leave everything and, and go and participate in this important event. Yes. But this glamour shaded a little bit by time. Yes, we have the uh, Dubai Film Festival. Of course, it attracts most of the superstars uh, from abroad and, and from, of course, the Arab actors and actresses. And we have the Cartage Film Festival also. Uh, it's one of the uh, attracting destinations now. What happened to the Cairo International Film Festival? Uh, what happened to Cairo International Film Festival? I wouldn't know the perfect answer for that. Uh, maybe because, uh, like just mentioned, there's a great deal of uh, trouble. There was a great deal of trouble going on, a lot of, a lot of turbulence over the past years. And uh, I believe in, from an organization standpoint, we started to 
<laughs> I don't know if, that, if that's relevant, actually. But uh, to treat it like we treat the month of Ramadan when it comes to drama, you know, we always discover that it's about to start and we have to rush everything in order to get it done yeah. and be present for it. And I believe this might be part of the reason why the Cairo International Film Festival, like most events, uh, it reaches until before the, the last few weeks or months and we're not even sure that it's going to happen. Uh, so I would believe that restoring in the event being uh, a consistent one, um, one that takes place all the time in uh, pre-scheduled spots and always respects that will get it back in uh, the spots of the glamour and uh, the, the importance that you just mentioned. However, I would say that it also benefited the, the, the festival a little bit, that it, becomes a, that it became an attraction for young movie makers, aspiring movie makers and aspiring stars. You see, I, I actually uh, had the honor of managing four Q&A sessions for four different movies, or were, uh, were the, fir the, the first full feature for the filmmakers as directors and maybe as writers as well. And, that's put, uh, and that puts the entire experience a little a bit reachable for the young filmmakers from Egypt and I, I, I witnessed some of the, many, the most interesting questions out there like asking the filmmakers what kind of cameras did they use, what kind of film reels did they use, what was the inspiration for certain parts. I would, I would say that a lot of them went home with a lot of inspiration, a lot of encouragement to go ahead and have their own experience. So even though the glamour might have been a little bit absent but it was replaced with things that are much more important. For, for filmmakers. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's more or less like an incubation for learning uh, for the upcoming period for a lot of people. Uh, yes, of yes. course, for the greater deal and still there were a lot of movie fans who were there for fun and they found some. Yes. But usually the movies of, uh, that uh, participate in, in any festival are, we cannot understand them as, a, as an audience. There's something <laughs> missing in the story, I, I, I don't know why. Uh, that's the deal with the festival movies, you know, that's a label, more or less. Some of them are sophisticated, some of them are a little, a little bit hard to follow. And I would take the side of the audience on that. I say this is a missing factor. It's not really a, a heavier weight given to the sophistication or to the experience. It is a missing weight from the thing that always drives us to go watch movies, which is entertainment and fun. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm glad to be with uh, Juan on this particular one because that was a fun movie. And I'm not saying a fun movie that you should be laughing while watching because this is something that we but always is mix his, up. But is his movie sophisticated or it's understandable? It has a great deal of sophistication, okay. of course. <laughs> it is one of those movies that you only have a limited number of cast members. Uh, very limited locations, even though they are open location, gives you a greater, a great feeling of loneliness and exposure at the same time. And, and that's a lot. But when we speak about the story, the narrative, uh, the coherence of the events, it's all there. It's, there's nothing hard to understand. There's there's nothing difficult to understand when it comes to this particular movie. On some movies, yes, a lot of things were not coherent in terms of storytelling, but that was not uh, a technical mistake that was intentional. Some of them were experimental projects, some of them were surreal projects, and those have their own audience and those have their own audience. So we took your opinion about the movie. We need to take Guan's uh, opinion about the festival. How, uh, how well did you, uh, you know, enjoy or experience this uh, festival so far? Um, I'm having a, like, a great time here in Cairo and the festival, I think it's great. I'm, I'm so happy to be here. And according to what he was saying, I know that sometimes maybe there are ways of telling stories in cinema, um, depending on the country or depending on the culture or something like that, but that's cinema. That's, yes. that's what cinema, we don't have to tell the same story in the same way because the world is so eclectic. So exactly. maybe back in Spain, we, we explain something in a way and then in China they do it in another way but they try to explain the same uh, but with different different manners you know what I mean so I think that's uh, the interesting thing about the um, International Film Festival that yeah. you get to see movies part, part of your from abroad. experience sorry uh, part of your experience you know joining this festival is trying to learn from others too so uh, what were the learn uh, you know uh, parts that you uh, gained from this uh, festival um, you're always learning things when you get to know other people from abroad and, and directors or other actors from... Even I met a girl from Sweden, Marlene, she's a great actress, and, and we were sharing like, like mm, our thoughts about the festival and, and we were thinking that it's, it's a really nice place mm, for, mm, to share like cinema here in Cairo because um, it's a, a so 
Ruby brand tea tea, and it has like all the ingredients that you need for, to have like a, a huge festival. And I think I think you do. Maybe maybe the glamour thing you were talking about has shaded away a little bit. But I don't know. I don't think it's all about the glamour things. I think the cinema has more things to say apart from the glamour. Joan, how long you've been acting? For 15 years. I'm 30 years old, so. 15 years. Half and you, of and my you life. participated before in, in any festivals, or this is the first time? No, I've been to India, I've been to Canada, I've been to France, I've been to many festivals already mm -hmm. with this movie and with other movies. And but when I I had the chance to go to a place with a more or less a different culture, culture. a different uh, way of living, or some. I don't know how to express that. Um, I, will, I, will, I always want to go because that's what I was saying before. That's, that's when you learn things. And with the cinema, it happens the same. When I see a Chinese movie or something like that, I like watching American and Spanish movies, obviously. But I like watching movies from abroad because I think that's, it that's when, you. when you get to learn things. Interesting. So. Um, Mahmoud Mahdi, as a film critic, what was you know the key takeaways in terms of the Egyptian film industry today? What is it, what are the things or the highlights of uh, what you have observed as a critic of the particular movies that participated in the festival? Yes. Or the or no, no, production? no. Uh, we're still with the festival. We'll go also to that. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, that that will give us a larger base to discuss. Yeah. <laughs> when we're speaking about the Egyptian movies that participated, we still get the same sense of rush, of last moment, kind of saving the day, kind of. Mm -hmm. I'm not see, I, I'm not seeing the films that participated as the kind of candidates or the kind of uh, representation that I would love would have loved for us to have. I didn't see a lot of people discussing the, the, the Egyptian movies that were participating there and I'm sorry, I, I'm trying to search for anything positive to see on that experience so I just keep, I'm keeping going on and on and it's all negative so stop me here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and no, we need to hear some negativity, it's okay. Uh, it's it's well, criticism, so uh, yeah. let's be constructive <laughs> it's criticism, that, yeah. Yeah. You, you, This is your job, you're a critic. Yeah. Yes. I would love to believe so, yes. So, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Not a lot of positive things to say about the Egyptian representation, as I'm yeah. telling you. A lot of foreign movies, even uh, as I'm telling you, experiences. One of the Polish movies that I discussed was actually sort of a graduation project for one of the filmmakers. It wasn't a great movie per se, but it did draw some story. attention yes. and it did spark some discussions. A lot of areas that I would say that Egyptian movies failed to achieve. Yes. Yeah. Joanne, uh, I want to ask you a question. Um, how does it like to be an actor? How do you find yourself? It's hard to be an actor actually because sometimes you have a lot of job and then you don't have anything. So um, I don't know. You're an actor if you really love acting and all this, these things, the glamour things and the festival and the festivals and the premieres are part of the job, but it's not all, all the job. So you have to try your best to be or to do the best that you can give being an actor. So I don't know. It's not that easy. It's not all about the the, um, <laughs> the fame and the and the pictures and no. It's about working hard and try to do your best all the time. Right, uh, Juan uh, Carlos and um, Mahmoud Mahdi would like to thank you very much for being here. It has been a pleasure talking to you and best of luck. Thank, thank you for you having us. Much. Let's move now to this break and returning back with more statements. Different films and its components were displayed through the Cairo International Film Festival, such as Irreplaceable from France, Anna's Life from Georgia, and The Visitor from Spain. The music, uh, the composer of the music is, is the brother of, of the director, which is a very important musician in Spain and he did a really good job with the music and he won awards uh, in with the music so we're really happy with the music and what because it's another character in the movie in the movie so it's a really nice mu music yeah 
The Exile film that was produced 2015, based on the background of political and social aspects at the time of fascism. Also, the film focused on the humanitarian aspect more than any other aspects in the society. The movie is quite interesting really, uh, even though it only has like three main characters and those are the people that you spend most of the time with during the movie, but it's never a dull moment. You can sense a great deal of complication in the way they deal with the situation that they have at hand. You do get a glimpse at their background and what makes their story even more complicated and even more special. Uh, the movie is not really that long. It respects uh, that aspect in its production. It's an independent production, so yeah, I liked it a lot, and it was an, a very interesting experience. And the democracy. So there's a wound there, and most of the people don't want to know. A seminar was held after the screening of the film for discussion with the audience. Also, the musical soundtracks of the film had a great admiration from both the audience and critics.